and how time. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of It's Howling Time with the Howling Wolves. Here again to give you selections for March 7th, 2020. The track's going to be Tampa Bay Downs. It is going to be race number 11, the Tampa Bay Derby, grade 2 for a $400,000 purse going a mile and one sixteenth distance on the dirt and also derby points. We got a field of 12 running. I'm going to give you my two top selections plus my horse to watch. My top selection is going to be the number four. Chance it at Morning Line Odds at 7 and 2 is by Currency Swap at a pleasantly perfect mare. Last time ran on January 4th at Gulfstream Park going a mile distance in the Mucho Macho Man stakes for a $100,000 purse. Was able to win that race by a head. Dueled and was up in mid-pack and right around that turn was into first, lost it, and came back down into the stretch to get that that win. The time before that ran on s- September 28th at, at Goldstream Park, going a mile and one sixteenth distance in the FSN fraternity reality, excuse me, for a four hundred thousand dollar purse. Was able to win that race by seven and a quarter lengths. Took up the lead, was in mid pack, was chasing the pace setter, then right around that second turn, was coming up into the lead and stretching out as the race went longer. The workouts have been on February 24th at Gulfstream Park going. Three furlongs on a fast track did in 34.68 seconds breezing was the best at the nine workouts that day. Then the last workout was on March 2nd at Gulfstream Park going four furlongs on a fast track did in 47.28 seconds breezing was the best at the 23 workouts that day. But I see with this one, it's six for four. It's trying to go for three in a row. It's getting Paco Lopez instead of keeping Tyler Gaffione over it. And Paco Lopez is Paco Lopez trainer and jockey combinations at 54%. So with this one, you're going to see Paco probably laying off a bit as usual with how he gets horses into position would be laying off, maybe try to be in mid pack to even stalking the pace setter, try to keep that same type of momentum that this horse has ran and knows. But maybe lay off a little bit more, maybe just get up in mid pack, let relax, then right around that second turn to come up around for that great late kick that you know it. That, that everyone knows that he has. So again, for my top selection in the Tampa Bay Derby, grade two, going a mile and one sixteen distance is the number four, chance it at morning line odds at five to two. And now it's going to be time for my second choice. My second choice is going to be the number nine, Unright Liches. Unright Liches is more than not, is at 20 to 1. It's by Violence out of a Tappet Mare. Last time ran on February 8th, going a mile one eighth distance at Gulfstream Park. For maiden special weight, fifty thousand dollars was able to get second by a length. Got bumped at the start, was coming up strong, and was right around that turn coming up second and stretch and held on for that second place. Was behind Spa 
city, which is also in this race. The time before that it ran on January 11th at Gulfstream Park, going a mile distance for maiden speculate fifty thousand dollars, was able to get fourth by fourteen and a half lengths. What this one is is that it ran, got in, it was improving, was in was in mid pack, then lost a little bit, was coming up strong. Then came in up around around that stretch was fourth and lost a bit of ground but was coming up for a good needed just a little bit more. When I see with this one, it's gonna be that it needs to improve. It's stepping up in class, but it has the running ability, it has the the fractions to be able to come up strong, but it is running against Fall City which has lost has been behind that that colt for a while. And let's see if he can improve this race. It's getting Joe Bravo aboard. Joe Bravo should know how to get this get him into position. If he watches the tape and watch and look at what type of improvements it needs. Jockey trainer combinations at sixteen percent. So with Todd Fletcher as a trainer at forty percent there and Joe Bravo, they should be able to get this horse into position well and at a great price. You won't be 20 to 1. It'll probably be a lot less. They'll be down and odd uh, just because uh, the, I'm pretty sure of Fletcher, but you'll see this one coming out strong and late from what I see. It has great fractions again. Should be able to come up strong and coming up fast. If it, does, if it gets a nice clean trip, it should improve to get up there for a good win or even in the money. So again, for my second choice in the Tampa Bay Derby, it is the number nine, unrightlessly at Morning Line Odds at 20 to 1. Now it's time for my horse to watch. My horse to watch is going to be the number 11, King Guillermo at Morning Line Odds at 15 to 1. Is by Uncle Mo out of a Dixieland band mare. Last time ran on November 30th at Gulfstream Park on the grass going a mile distance in the pulpit stakes for $75,000. Was able to get second, was able to get third by three and a half lengths. It took the lead, was up in there, and then lost ground down into the stretch and was getting tired as the race went longer. Was almost right behind So Valente, which also is in this race, which would be So Valente is the morning line favorite in here. The time before that, it ran on November 2nd at Gulfstream Park West, going a mile distance on the grass for a maiden special weight, $48,000. Was able to win that race by six and a quarter lengths. Was able to be the pace setter and was coming down the stretch. Had eight lengths ahead, but was tiring out. But able to keep, since it had that long lead, they had enough to stay up there and clear. So again, for that, it was that, with that one. And also the workouts have been on February 22nd at Gosling Park going five furlongs on a sloppy track. Did it in 59.69 seconds breezing. Was the second best out of the 11 workouts that day. Then the last workout was on February 29th at Gulfstream Park going four furlongs on a fast track did it in 50.09 seconds breezing was the 52nd best out of the 73 workouts that day but with this one as my horse to watch it has some great fractions at the mile distance it's spreading out and moving up in class 
It should be able to come up strong if it's a nice surface. Uncle Mo's horses have been coming up strong and late as the ability. Also with the Dixieland mare, it could be if it's a nice track, you'll see it coming on strong. It's trying to dirt for the second time. It may need the stability to come up strong. And going the longer distance, it should show that it has the great fractions to come up strong and late. It just needs that little bit more to what well, I see what needs to be done with this one. It's tried to be the a one being the pace that are all the way through at the mile distance on the grass. But going back onto the dirt, well I see what needs to be done. It needs to be close, but maybe like in mid pack, then coming up strong into the last race. So what needs to be done is that she needs he needs to get the horse into position very well. Sammy Camacho is aboard, is a 19% jockey. The trainer's at 17%, so you'll see this one coming out strong and late. So again, from a horse to watch, in the Tampa Bay Derby, it is the number 11, King Guerrero at Moilan Odds at 15 to 1. So to recap my selections for the Tampa Bay Derby, num race number 11, going a mile and one sixteenth distance, it is my top selections. So number four, chance it at morning line odds at five to two. My second choice is the number nine, unrighteous at morning line odds at twenty to one, and my horse to watch, it is the number 11, King Guillermo. At morning line odds at 15 to 1. And remember, when you're cashing with the wolf, it's how. Lane time. Good luck, everyone, and let's cash in those tickets. Hope everyone has a great day at handicapping, and let's make that money.